Now, buddy, my personal Roman Empire is the sheer amount of products that the company of Mitsubishi makes. You know, sometimes I think that, you know, in the headquarters of Mitsubishi in the Japan, their meetings would have looked like this. All right, fellas, so I, I, we've got the name, right? Let's maybe think of some products that we should make. So my suggestion is maybe let's do some cars. That's good. Yeah, how about Mitsubishi cars? That's brilliant. What else? How about some household appliances like air conditioning units and like refrigerators and like ovens and stuff. Oh yes, Adam, that's brilliant. Let's also make some TVs, right? I think we should also make like some like big wind turbines. That's a great idea. Ah, perfect. Let's maybe also do like a nuclear power plant. I'm gonna write that down. That's brilliant. So energy, right? Maybe some solar panels. So far, that's good. Let's maybe also add a financial division to it. We want to make monies, right? Yes, we love monies. That's perfect. Any other ideas? You know what? Actually, I was thinking, how about like some chemicals, like plants? Plastics. Yeah, I'm gonna write that down too. Plastics. Actually, Mr. Mitsubishi, I was also thinking, how about we, you know, add like a mining division, like coal or copper? Great, I can see. We are able to do anything. Any other ideas? Sir, I would like to build ships. Yes. Oh, yes, the Mitsubishi Titanic. That's a perfect idea. Any other ideas? What haven't we done yet? Hmm. You know what? I, w I feel like I, I want to make an aeroplane. Yes, the Mitsubishi aeroplane. That's a brilliant idea, Adam. But what do you think? But what should be our like unique selling point? What should our plane be known for? Actually, I was thinking, let's have it have an immensely poor safety record. Ah. Yes, everybody, welcome aboard the MU-2, which is not the Japanese version of that one Irish band that everybody got on iTunes at one point for no reason at all. No, this right here is the Mitsubishi Mu-2 airplane, which had its first flight in 1963, and it was built until 1986. We're talking about a plane that's not immensely modern, but it, you know, kind of aged relatively well. Over 700 of these were built, and well, it definitely was not a failure. You know, it is actually one of the first trouble prop airplanes that were actually designed to be one from the start. And well, you can tell it's kind of quirky and something else it's, you know, known for is it's pretty poor safety record indeed. It is true 27.7% of all MU-2s that were ever delivered were involved in an accident with an especially high fatal accident rate. Today I'm going to try to answer the question, why is this plane so immensely dangerous? Why did it crash so often? Is it just a Mitsubishi thing or... or were the pilots who were involved in those accidents the ones to blame? Yes, everybody, the lack of training. To find out, I've downloaded the relatively new Mitsubishi MU2 from Enibuilt, you know, for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. This one costs 10 euros now on the marketplace. It is relatively new and it's got a relatively poor rating, but maybe we'll find out why that is as well. All right, so here we are in the cockpit of the MU2. Obviously, it is not the newest airplane. This is a very spacious airplane, obviously used for cargo, but also for small passenger transfer. You know, making it perfect for an airport maybe like this, Courchevel. I'm sure this plane flew here at some point. Let me go ahead and take off right now with those two triple prop engines. And man, I do love those triple prop planes that don't need a long runway. Come on, let's go full power. Here we go. Flaps are now going down. We've got a relatively poor acceleration. That's quite interesting. Come on, keep going, Mitsubishi plane. Yes, now... Uh, kind of rotating out of Courchevel. This is not actually very much high powered considering it's a turbo prop. Let's go ahead and put the landing gear up, which actually does look kind of weird and kind of cool at the same time. Look at this beautiful retractable landing gear. And we are now able to fly indeed. Now, this plane is quite quirky. I mean, while most airplanes have their roll flight control delivered through aileron flaps that move on the wing, we all know them, this plane uses spoilers. So if we turn left, this thing <laughs> comes out. If we turn right, this thing comes out. You may have seen that maybe from a remote control airplane. Look, these small spoilers. surfaces are responsible for turning the airplane. And that means that this plane's gonna fly a little bit different to other airplanes. Ah, uh -huh. and I think we are already kind of getting to a bit of an explanation as to why this plane crashed so often. Perhaps it was the pilots who weren't really familiar with the relatively unusual flight characteristics. Let me try to take off here from this St. Bartholomew runway. I mean, I was kind of shocked here at the Courchevel airport that this plane doesn't actually have a very good acceleration. Take a look at the power. Come on, come on. Yes. This thing needs like at least 100 knots to take off, which is not very usual for a triple prop airplane like this. Obviously not to be compared with like a twin auto that needs like no runway at all. This thing is kind of picky. Interesting. Now the reason why this plane needs so much speed to actually rotate 
can be explained through the high wing loading feature it has, right? So the wings are designed to support a lot of weight, which is great for high speed flying. This plane can fly a lot faster than, you know, a twin otter if we want to compare it to that. But because of that wing profile, the plane flies relatively poorly at slow speed. Now, this is why many of the accidents we're talking about happen because of taking off at insufficient runway length or inappropriate weather conditions, or for example, mismanaging an engine failure. This plane doesn't fly fly once again like a twin otter. I mean, let's maybe try a landing here. That can be quite a challenge. I mean, we're at 120 knots already. Let me slow down while not stalling out. I think you can actually kind of feel that this plane rolls quite a bit differently. Kind of doesn't, kind of doesn't wobble. Let's maybe not stall out indeed. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to make this plane sound like immensely dangerous. Many pilots report that this plane actually flies relatively nicely once you know its limits, especially in a steep turn that we're about to do. Right, there's the runway. Come on, come on. You're doing well, Mewtwo. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, oh my God. That will be a go around, but we don't care. Let's go ahead and touch down now. Oh, that was hard. Okay. Oh my God. Let's go ahead and stop now, which works relatively easily. Of course, we've got some sort of reverse thrust, right? And there we go. Stoppings work fine. That's great. This plane did not specifically like overrun on landings, especially on takeoffs. There we go. We managed to do a flight and we didn't crash for a change. Let me check out some other liveries we have here. Executive cla uh, Black. Perfect. Bit of a shame. We only have like one configuration of the Mu2. You know, only this cargo configuration. All right. Now, welcome to Lukla Airport. I don't think this plane feels very comfortable here. Anyway, what else can we do with this model? I mean, we can put the sun blinds down. Not too crazy. Look, we can at least turn the de-icing boots on. That's good. And then we have a phone right here. Sadly, it does not have TikTok, but we can open a map. That's convenient. Right, nothing too special at all here. Now, you know, over the past minutes, I've been trying to explain that this plane flies a bit differently than other airplanes. And well, usually that's not that big of a problem, but the biggest problem really is that this plane never had a type rating that was required for a pilot to fly it, especially in the US. Oh, we're not going to make it, actually. We're, we are not going to make it. This plane does not feel comfortable at this airport. Jesus, we're actually not making it at all. We've We've not made it. Crazy. I, I wouldn't have thought this, but there we go. We've been it, not been able to fly to Lukla Airport. This thing needs quite a bit of runway. Yes, everybody. Unlike most other airplanes that are complex in their ways of flying, there was no mandatory training for pilots. And this is what I think caused many accidents. I mean, you can see it in Europe, for example. Training requirements are much stricter, which is why there are much less accidents that happen in Europe. Which is why we can conclude that this plane is not like inherently dangerous. But the lack of training of pilots who flew this plane was the reason it crashed so many times. Which is, by the way, a relatively common malaise in aviation. I mean, take a look at the 737 MAX crashes. They definitely would have happened if pilots were thoroughly trained, everybody. So everybody, pilot training is always the answer. Talking about that, let's go ahead and try to land here at Lukla, which this plane definitely was not designed for. And I guess pilots tried anyway. Not specifically here at this airport. Uh, it, it does fly. I kind of hate the way it handles. Although, again, most pilots say it kind of flight flew nicely C come on yeah oh jesus christ this plane was not specifically known for easy landings either. I'm not sure. All right, there we go. We've been able to, to stop very quickly. That's quite impressive. I think rather we should focus on the plane's skills. And that is flying, once again, immensely fast. The twin otter that flies here in real life is in no way able to fly at 200 knots with the landing gear up. Amazing performance. So ready to conclude the plane's questionable reputation, I came up with this quote. Even in the shallowest and most safest swimming pools, People will drown if they can't swim. And okay, this is not the shallowest swimming pool, but it's definitely not the deepest one either. <clears throat> Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this philosophical video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. That's a trash.